Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, let me just get Skype out of here. It seemed to have had it off, but it seemed to have come back on. And here we go. I think this should be set. Good. We're going to be talking. Uh, uh, I'm just going to be getting away a little bit uh, from the clinical part. We had a wonderful clinical presentation uh, from Professor Pavlich, and uh, I would like to get into a different area. I'd like to get into an area of the more uh, clinical uh, concerns where we uh, figure out what the uh, different possibilities are for actually using this in the practice and paying uh, for it. Because ultimately, we not only have to use it for our patient's benefit, but we have to make sure that we can pay for it and use it effectively in our practice. Uh, I'm in a private practice uh, part-time, and this is a very real concern for me. We're going to be taking a look at uh, eliminating the sensitivity, how easy it is to do, uh, surface disinfection, how important and how easy it is to do, uh, improving operative success, what that means. This is the first time that we're really considering operative success in the sense that we're questioning some of the things that we have been doing for over 100 years. And, uh, of course, uh, return on investment. Now. The return on investment, the business aspect of dentistry is not something that is talked about in polite meetings. But of course, those of us who have our own practices and those of us who work for others in their practices have to have a very firm handle on the business aspect. Because if you don't have a firm handle on the business aspect, if you're not able to make money on it, you won't be in practice for long. You will not be able to continue helping your patients for any length of time if you are out of business. So uh, let's take a look at that. Also, how many treatment opportunities are offered to us by uh, ozone treatment? Well, uh, let's take a look at, uh, first of all, my role. Uh, I'm the co-founder of the Aesthetic Dentistry Education Center, which was the first uh, master's program in aesthetic dentistry. Uh, and I'm involved in also teaching and writing extensively in that field. But this is where I make my money. In my clinical practice over here, uh, as most of you know who are teachers, teaching doesn't pay very well. As those of you who write in dentistry know, writing doesn't pay very well. Since I devote my uh, time, half of my time, to teaching and writing, I have to be very careful about how I make money over here, chair side, because otherwise I will not be able to feed my family. So those are the considerations that drive me. I have to be very cognizant of every procedure I do and how efficient and how effective it is. Before I start, I'd like to mention I consult for and work with a number of dental manufacturing, distribution, and trading companies. And any of these relationships could affect what I'm going to tell you. However, I do work with quite a few companies. And as a result, hopefully, all my prejudices will cancel out. When I'm talking to you about procedures, when I'm talking to you about products, when I'm talking to you about technologies, uh, these are uh, the products that I'm using today in the practice. The technologies, the materials. The ones that I've been using for the past uh, few weeks or past few months, and I'll be continuing to use when I get back, back to my practice next week. Six months ago it may have been different. Six months from now, who knows? But for now, this is what I consider in my hands and in my practice the state of the art. When we take a look at what is new and exciting in dentistry, we try to take a look at the problems that exist. We have to find the problems in our practices. 
and for these problems find solutions that can solve them. These solutions are really defined by uh, new opportunities that are better, better for our patients, better for ourselves, faster, more efficient, and easier to do. Most of us, being dentists, read the instructions for the first time when something goes wrong. Isn't that correct? So do I. And that's a little bit too late, unfortunately. We should be reading it much earlier. But we like to be tactile. We like to touch things. We like to figure things out. That's not a bad thing. It's just simply the way the dentists are. That's the type of person that goes into dentistry. So things have to be easy. Things have to be intuitive. Things have to be um, readily apparent. Better, faster, easier. This is a question that I always ask myself. If we have a new procedure, a new material, that is not better, faster, or easier, or a combination thereof, what's the point in switching to it? Do I want to switch to a new technology or a new material that is less efficient, that is less effective, that's not going to do the job for my patients, that's not going to do the job for me? Of course not. So uh, those are the things that we're going to be applying to every new technology, every new material that we look at. One of the most important areas that we've never looked at is surface disinfection. And I'll show you just in a few moments why it's so important. Improving operative success. We have all accepted the fact that our restorations break down over time. Is this really something that is inherent in the material? When an amalgam breaks down, or a composite breaks down, is it the material itself that has broken apart, or more often, at the margin, where there's re-decay? It's usually the marginal re-decay that is really what's happening. That's a major problem. Why does that happen? Well, one is micro-leakage from the outside. The other is reinfection from the inside, because the surfaces were not disinfected. Imagine if you went to your doctor when you had a cut on your arm, and the doctor didn't bother cleaning the arm, simply left the dirt, the old blood, everything in there, and put a bandage on it. You would never go back to this doctor again. But we do this when we fill cavities every single time. Eliminating sensitivity. Many of our patients come in because of sensitivity. If it doesn't hurt, they try to stay away from the dentist. Let's face it, we're probably not the most loved profession in the world. We're almost as disliked as lawyers. It's not quite, but almost. And uh, patients will try to avoid it. They'll come into us when they have to. But when we have them in the practice, that's our opportunity to treat them, to tell them about dental health, to try to convince them in a better direction. The treatment opportunities that are provided by any new technology, if they expand our practice, it's perfect. If they constrict our practice, not so good. New disinfection technologies that have come around in the past few years include the helosol. It came around about eight, nine years ago, and uh, in Biosonics and Zonics unit, and the Esectum Plus over here. These are three of the major areas. Well, what are the differences between these? Uh, this, first of all, is a different material. It's not a direct material. You have to go through a solution. And because you have to go uh, uh, through a solution, you cannot really apply it directly to the tooth. So it's an indirect procedure. It involves another step, another material. Not that it's a problem, but it's less effective, less efficient. That leaves us uh, the ozone uh, products that we see over here. Let's 